Put you back up here. Didn't mean to drop you. That was really rude of me. What a bad hostess I am. That's better. Oh, maybe not. Welcome back to Humble Homemaking. I am so happy to see you again, or are you happy to see me? I don't know. Anyways, well, we did a video on bathroom habits. Now let's find out if you have any bad kitchen habits. The first one is not separating your silverware in your dishwasher. And I know this one doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but it actually makes unloading your dishwasher so much quicker when everything is separated, when you have your forks, your knives, your spoons, and whatever other utensils, serving utensils, all that separated. So you can go into your dishwasher, grab all of your forks, put them all away, grab all of your knives, put them all away, grab all of your spoons, put them all away, and it makes it so much easier, makes things go by so much quicker. So separate your silverware. Just try it out for a few weeks. Try it out for a few days, not even a few weeks. Just try it out and see if, if it's something that you could possibly stick with. Can, that's great. It will make unloading your dishwasher so quick. The second thing is not rinsing off your dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. Okay, so another little confession. I was guilty of this. For a really long time, my childhood and even into adulthood and honestly, really embarrassing to admit this, but I am the reason that our dishwasher probably broke. Well, that's what the food trap is for in the dishwasher. It's catching all the food. Why would I have to rinse it off? What's the job of the dishwasher if I have to wash it all? The dishwasher is for sanitizing and for cleaning, but it is not a garbage disposal. And I had to learn that the hard way when my dishwasher broke. So please do your dishwasher a favor and don't, don't make it do any extra work than it has to. When I created the habit of washing off my dishes before putting them into the dishwasher, I was like, oh my gosh, Chelsea, why have you not done this sooner? Like that type of thing. I was just like, oh, I get it. Wow, I can't believe, I can't believe after all these years, I finally get it. Number three is stop using so many glasses. You won't stop going to get a new glass every time you get something to drink. If you're a stay at home mom like me, or if you have children that are of the age to drink glasses, try and get yourself and them into the habit of using one glass a day and rinsing it out after they're done using it. So if they go and get some milk, rinse it out after they're done drinking the milk keep that cup or that glass for them because at the end of the night when you load your dishwasher you'll have a lot more space to move things around and keep things from getting cluttered in there when you're only putting in a few cups versus four cups per person number four is to stop using your countertops as cutting boards this dulls your knives and if you have porous surfaces on your countertops, meat juice or vegetable juice, especially meat juice, meat juice is really gross and you don't want that soaking into your countertops, but you don't want anything soaking into your countertops. So try and keep the food cutting on the cutting boards. Make sure that you have your two separate cutting boards, have your wood cutting board for, for fruits and veggies, and then have your other cutting board, which I prefer glass, for your meats because we don't want that cross-contamination which I will be talking about in another video so make sure you subscribe for that. I have the laminate countertops and whoever lived here before me did a lot of cutting on the countertops because there's little knife slices in the laminate which reminds me that I will be doing a budget-friendly DIY countertop renewal process which should be lots of fun that I'm going to record. So make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss that because it should be pretty interesting watching little old me try and do some DIY stuff. Number five is letting kitchen mess accumulate. Letting your oven get filthy dirty before cleaning it. Letting your toaster oven get filthy dirty before cleaning it. Letting your refrigerator get filthy and gross before finally going, eh, I should clean it. 
prevent having to do extra work than I really need to. I make sure that my kitchen is clean every single night before I go to bed and I make sure that everything is wiped off. And then Fridays are set aside for deep cleaning the kitchen. Every Friday I deep clean the kitchen. Just because you can't see the mess doesn't mean it's not there. Just take a white paper towel and wipe off whatever you think isn't dirty. And I guarantee if you look at it, there's going to be a little bit of dirt. I like to have no mess in my kitchen, no grease in my kitchen. So I like to make sure that everything is clean and that no mess is accumulating because a messy kitchen is a gross kitchen. And if you're trying to get out of the habit of not having a cleaning routine, you do not want your kitchen to get out of place because if your kitchen is out of order, it makes it so much easier for you to fall behind on things and for everything else to get out of order. If your kitchen is clean, you are motivated that much more to keep the rest of your house clean. Meals are cooked there, conversations are held there, coffee is made there, coffee is important, right? Tea is very important too, let's not forget about tea. Tea is made there, so you want your kitchen to be clean and inviting. For me personally, when you walk through my front door, the kitchen is the first room that you see. So if the kitchen is a mess, the rest of my house looks like a mess. I make sure that my kitchen stays as clean as possible and that no mess accumulates. So that is all for today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And I have to go tend to my child who took a very rare midday nap. I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.